Thank you very much. And Judy, let's get started. Absolutely. Well, welcome everybody to our Saturday morning webinar. Uh, it is uh, July, and uh, from what we hear around the country, the weather is hot. So we're going to heat it up today in our virtual meeting space and talk about the laws of success by Les Brown. This is the first time we are actually talking about a book from Les Brown. Um, we finished um, our other series, The 21 Laws of Leadership and by John Maxwell. And so we are starting our new series and we're so happy today to talk about uh, the law of su uh, success by Les Brown. And he begins uh, in his first chapter, which is basically listen to your heart, uh, about greatness and greatness being a decision. And what we wanted to mention first this morning is really what is greatness? And Bob and I had quite a, a lively discussion earlier this week about that because um, you know, our individual definitions of greatness are different. And that, I think, is really the crux of the matter here is, as an individual, we all must decide on what really, when we become great, when we do something great, when we are great, what does that mean to us as an individual? For some people, it means that you know, they have a lot of money in the bank and that makes them great. For others of us, it means that we have um, attained a, a level of success in possibly a different way. Maybe it's uh, our own personal legacy that we want to leave to um, our friends, to our family, to the world. So the, the first thing that you you've got to do is define what greatness means um, to you as an individual and then you can make the decision to get there but just like um, you know I'm, I'm right now on the highway headed to the airport if I didn't have a certain way to get to the airport uh, I probably would be late for my flight today because um, with, without a guide, without a map, without a re real destination, it is difficult to know if you are on the way or not. You know, our our um, our parents bring us into the into the world, but we we really decide on what we are going to do with that. And I think Bob, you have a, a quote about that, don't you? I do, Judy, thanks. And, you know, I think this is something that, that this conversation is really important, I think, for everyone on this webinar is that you have to determine what greatness means to you personally. Because we, we all see life a little bit differently, one from another. And uh, we're, we're going to get into that a little bit more as we go along. We wanted to do just a little uh, background here with regard to Les Brown. Ted, uh, Earl, a minute ago, asked a question about Les Brown's beginnings in, in, in the industry. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do just a little short little reader's theater here quickly, just to sort of introduce Les Brown. He said, I often introduce myself as Mamie Brown's baby boy. It's hard to see a guy this big as a baby boy. He says, my mother, Mamie Brown, was one of the most important people in my life. She instilled greatness in me. She never gave up on my brother Wesley or me. She showed me that no matter what the odds were, you had to push through. My mother also showed me that greatness isn't passive. It's not an idea, it's action. When she adopted my brother and me, she didn't know how to be a mother. She didn't know how to raise us or even how she was going to feed and clothe us. What she did know, however, was that she loved us the moment she saw us. My birth mother, who I've never known, made Mamie Brown promise never to separate Wesley and me, and she didn't. I grew up with a lot of resentment towards my mother, but I released that burden when I read a quote by Khalil Gibran, and this is what Judy was just referencing. He said, our parents bring us into the world, 
But in the end, we are responsible for what we become. And of course, what this means is that you got to be your own person. It isn't the person who gave you birth who determines who you are. It's who you become. It's a, that, and that, quite frankly, has been a, a, one of my models my entire adult life is that we are what we become. We have an opportunity while we're here on planet Earth to become whoever we want to become. And uh, that's always been really, really important to me. It's a principle I've taught to my children. It's a decision. Greatness is a decision. You decide what your limits are. You decide your level of success. It's extremely important to remember that. We don't all go through life hoping, wishing, praying that we could become millionaires. For some of us, that's never even come into the picture. For me, for example, I've never given a rip about getting rich. It just isn't in my DNA. I don't care about it. I never have cared about it. But, you know, that's me. So greatness to me isn't about how much financial success but you individually are responsible for the time that you spend here on planet Earth. If you don't succeed, there's nobody to blame but yourself. No one for us to blame but ourselves. Where we are right now isn't the fault of your parents, not the fault of your teachers. It's not the fault of your community. You're where you are right now because of choices that you've made. And I think that's just, just how it is, you know. But in life, more than anything else, we need hope. I think that's extremely important, that we need hope as we move forward, and we need to have a spirit of perseverance in order to go forward. So, Judy, I wanted to move to this next slide. Listen to your heart. Judy, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to hear your thoughts with regard to listen to your heart. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. And, you know, this, this seems kind of um, against what we are taught because things have to add up mathematically and scientifically and, um, you know, the uh, column wise, you know, how many things are for something and how many things are against something. And if there's more against, you don't do it and vice versa. Um, and so for, for us to look at how to listen to your heart, it kind of goes against a lot of what we were taught when we went to school. Um, this is actually um, a picture of my daughter and my granddaughter. And, um, you know, she's listening to my granddaughter's heart and my granddaughter is absolutely full of of joy and wonderment, which she always is. But uh, to me, this is a great story of listening to your heart. Um, my daughter is married. She has three children. Um, since her first child was born, she was a stay-at-home mom and um, enjoyed that. But something started tugging at her heart um, for quite a long time, and she she's you know, kept ignoring it because it just didn't make sense. Um, having three children and a husband that works um, much more than 40 hours a week, didn't, didn't get home until um, seven o'clock every night and worked on the weekends, um, didn't make sense, but she decided to go back to school. And um, she did not have any college at all behind her, uh, behind her belt. But she decided to go back to school and she wanted to become a nurse. And so four years ago, that's what she did. And she took an accelerated course, um, which meant a lot of um, online and face-to-face -face studying, uh, many, many hours. But she listened to her heart. And um, on the 10th of May, she graduated from college with a degree um, in uh, health sciences and as an RN. And did it make sense four years ago for her to do it? <laughs> Absolutely not. But she listened to her heart and and that's, that's um, the future that she is bringing to um, her family. Not only um, her hard work, but 
um, helping other people and, um, you know, moving forward in, in her life. So, so what makes sense is not always the right thing. You know, it's what your heart is saying. And sometimes it means a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of long hours. But um, sometimes it's just the right thing. Trudy, thank you for sharing that picture, too. I didn't realize that was your daughter and granddaughter. They're lovely people. That's great. And, you know, it's interesting, too, what a positive uh, spin you just placed on that. It's, it's so true. We were just dealing with someone who's going through a, a very difficult time in their life with a husband uh, who's just a jerk, frankly. But this individual has chosen because, you know, logically, um, you know, she's thinking to herself that, that, you know, divorce is the thing to do. But in her heart, her feelings towards her children, their circumstances are different. And so instead of listening to the counsel that other people are saying, which is get rid of this guy, she's thinking differently and she's following her heart. So, it, you know, it spins in so many different directions to listen to your heart, pay attention to what you really feel inside of you. And, uh, and it will, it will uh, pay big dividends. Years ago, I took an enormous cut in wage to take a different job. This was a long time ago. I more than cut my income in half in order to take a different job in a different state. You know, logically, it didn't make any sense at all. But in the long run, because we paid attention and, and did what, the, what really what we felt spiritually inclined to do, it paid huge dividends. Listen, all of us, to our hearts. <clears throat> you have to come to that point where you ask, well, you know, am I, am I in control of my life? I think this is a really, really important subject. And I, I think, uh, you know, for everyone that's on the webinar this morning, take a little, take a moment here. Think about this. Am I in control of my life? Take a minute, stop and think about this, you know, um, and be honest. Are you doing what you want to do with your life? Are there people who are tugging on the, on strings and pulling you around, you know? Uh, are you doing the kind of work you want to do? You know, do you have the kind of health that you want to have? You know, are you income wise or are you where you want to be? Can you, can you travel? Or is somebody kind of pulling on your strings? I've been there. I've been in positions in my lifetime where other people really were in control of my life and I didn't like it. Uh, you know, there are times when you ha don't have any choice really, if you will, for a while. Uh, raising a family. I had five children. I lived in western Montana and, and work was a little tough there. But I wanted my children to grow up in a rural environment and I wanted them to grow up in, uh, in Montana. It was important to me. Uh, but there were times when I thought, you know what, I am not in control of my life. I was building somebody else's dream. And that's always been a concern to me. Uh, if you don't take control of your life, your days will be spent on the ends of strings pulled by someone else. And as it were, you know, building someone else's dream. And uh, I think that's just uh, really unfortunate. But you're your own person. And you have the ability to create the life that you've always wanted. It's, it's always been in you. Sometimes I think we just have to, if you will, just kind of let it out. We have to break free, if you will, from the things that bind us and take back control of our lives. I think it's so important that we, that we live our lives, um, you know, in, in tune with our own values and our own goals. But to do that, you have to know what you want. You, you know what I mean? You have to, you have, to have that kind of uh, interview with yourself where you, where you stop and think, well, am I in control of my life? Am I doing, am I moving? <laughs> and once you do that, once you get through that, then you can start really thinking about what it is that you're doing and, and where you want to go, what, what adjustments that you have to make in order to uh, to get to where you want to go. I read something. Oh, yeah, here. I read something by um, Les Brown that I wanted to share again. Just to, uh, if I might, just read something. He said, where does your dream life truly come from? He says it comes from your heart. More specifically, it comes from listening to your heart. 
In order to live the life you were always meant to live, you need to dig deep inside. You need to be honest with yourself. And you need to find out what your heart really wants. And being honest with yourself is extremely important here. Your heart's an amazing guide because it isn't influenced by outside forces. It doesn't care about what the logical decision is. And it doesn't care what your current influencers have to say about the life you're supposed to live. Your heart is connected to your purpose. It has a direct line with something more powerful. And it knows your role in God's divine plan. Your heart knows why you are here. And it breaks when you don't live in line with the life that you're supposed to be living. That's why you get sad when you think about how other people are living their dreams and living the lives that they want to live, but you aren't. It's because your heart knows what you're supposed to be doing and you're not listening to it. And so kind of, I guess, in a nutshell, it comes back to, you know, who's pulling my strings? Take a minute, stop and think about where your life is going, what you're doing with your time, and then try to find a way to adjust. Judy? Yeah, thank you, Bob. And, um, you know, it's, it's so interesting what you say about, um, about people pulling your strings. And we all have probably at one time in our lives been there. Um, you know, I know especially um, as a young mom, sometimes when you are uh, got some kids and there's places to go and things to do, and it feels like um, you're not in control. And the truth of the matter is, though, that you are in control. Yes, you have responsibilities, but you can decide in what way you perform those responsibilities so that other people um, don't take control and take demand of, of your life. Um, not that you, you know, you don't uh, take care of your children and take care of your family, but uh, there's just a different way when you listen to your heart on how you show up and how you make those decisions. Um, in a regular, in regular way, you know, we had a 21 day challenge call for several years and those 21 day challenge calls, we developed a method to look at where we wanted to improve ourselves on a daily basis, how to actively change habits or create new habits so that we became better person. And um, we, we really looked at what we really wanted in our lives. And we came up with these five things um, to really be able to segregate and look at individually and then put together as a whole. So, you know, where, where is your faith? Whether that's, uh, you know, believing in um, a God or a spirit, we all have faith. We all believe in something that's unknown, even if it's with inside of us. Where is your faith? Where are you and how are you growing in your faith? Where are you with you, your family? Are they pulling your string? Or is there a way for you to take control and take responsibility? Um, and where are you in, in fitness? And when we talk about fitness, we talk about all health, not just physical fitness, but um, mental fitness and um, our, our physical bodies and what we're doing with that. And of course, we're so blessed here at Synergy Worldwide because that, that health part is really what we are about. So we can focus on that a lot, but make sure you focus on yourself when it goes to your fitness. Um, and your finances. And to me, this doesn't mean how much money you have. It really means what you feel about money, how it is pulling your strings, so to speak, or if you have control over the, the your income and your expenditures to make sure that um, your expenditures don't outweigh your income. Sorry, I'm probably pretty loud. Yeah, it's all right, Judy. 
It's all right. I'll go ahead and take over here for a minute. You know, it's it, Judy's trying to get onto a uh, onto a flight, so she's dealing with some crowds and, and walking around trying to talk on the phone and be on this webinar all at the same time. But I, I love this slide. I think it's really important for us as we stop and think about listening to our heart. What do we really want? What What do you want as an individual? You know, we did this 21 day challenge call for a number of years, and it was wonderful. Judy led that call every uh, Tuesday morning. And we talked about these things. We set goals. We created these little categories of things that we wanted to improve on, on our, in our lives. And we were very specific. For example, under faith, you know, it had to do with prayer or, or reading scripture or, you know, finding good books to read or whatever it was. Under family, things that we wanted to do uh, to make our family stronger and fitness, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I know that as I looked at at, at, at my 21 day challenge categories and what I was doing with myself, I had more struggle trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do financially than anything else. Because somehow I'm just not hardwired to want to make a lot of money. I, I, you know, I can't explain it, you guys. It's just a weird thing. It doesn't matter. But my faith, my family, how I feel fitness wise. Um, meant more to me, always has meant more to me than, uh, than riches and gold. And, and that's fine, but that's just Bob. But in other words, when we look at, you know, what, what, when we listen to our heart, what is it that we really want to do in life? We need to focus on these kinds of things, kind of getting, getting in touch with our own heart. Um, there's a get in there is right. Um, slide up and I thought it was really cool to get in touch with your own heart and sometimes when we talk about you know really kind of figuring out who we are and what we want to do and and then getting in touch with our heart you know it's like well what in the heck does that mean and I think for a lot of us it's just like understanding where it is we want to go you know what what path do we want to go down what do I need to do to get on that path I know for myself um I've set a lot of goals during the course of my life. And I realized that some of those goals have been things like, I want to be a better husband. I can be a, I can be a lot better husband than I've been. You know, I've been married for almost 46 years to the same girl. I, I met Bonnie hitchhiking across America in the summer of 73. That was, that's a long time ago. And here we are 46 years later, five children and a dozen grandchildren. And life has been good but I could be better, you know, in, in regard to my friends, uh, I want to be a better friend. You know, they're, they're just some specific things. I want to be, you know, I want to serve more people, help more people in my life. That, that for me, at my age, at 67 plus years old, at this juncture in my life, mostly retired, um, those are the things that I want to do. And getting in touch with my heart means being a better man being a better friend, a better father, a better husband, way more than, you know, having a lot of fun or whatever. Those are the things that for me at this juncture really mean a great deal. And so there are little things that we can do. And one of those things is journaling. And I'm not sure how many of you on this call are journal, uh, but I do. And uh, I started writing a journal when Bonnie and I first got married, back in 1973. And I've got probably 10 or more full journals uh, in my trunk over here. I, to this day, uh, I do that. I've got a pen, I've got some paper, and, uh, and I like to write. I like pen and paper, I just do. And uh, I've been journaling for literally years. Sometimes it's just a, a condensation of the day. Uh, sometimes it's reflections on the things that I'm feeling. It might be memories that I want to store. I look back at journal entries, try to get a sense of what went on in the past, uh, recognizing I look for patterns, things that, but, but journaling allows me to find a quiet place. Uh, and I think that's something that's extremely important to all of us, that if we want to get in touch with our inner self, we need to find a quiet place. Um, I sit uh, at my desk oftentimes here, not really meditating per se in a, you know, in a um, tr traditional sense. But I sit quietly, get comfortable in my chair, and I stop and ponder. I just sit here and, and think about things. 
I don't know, Judy, if you can get back on or not, if you can, I'd, I'd like to get your sense of things here again. But um, that's been something that's been extremely helpful to me uh, is to just find a quiet place. Now, some of us live in the city and some of us don't. And where we live, where Bonnie and I live here in North Idaho, if it's as quiet outside as it is inside. In other words, you know, it's just the two of us, so if there's no TV on, and, and it's not very often, it's quiet in our home. And when we step outside and, and look around us, it's quiet outside, unless there's a tractor going by or a combine or something, there's very little sound. And so where we live, it is quiet. And that really works for me. I love the quiet. I'm able to think and uh, ponder in the quiet. So it helps me. Um, to kind of getting in touch with my heart. It does, I know, for Judy, and, and uh, she was going to share a thought or two about this, but I don't think she can quite get on just now. So we're going to talk about something else. You see this slide? Are you on, Judy? This, okay, I'm going to tell you guys about this slide. This is Judy's family. This is her family on this insane uh roller coaster thing i the when she first when i first looked at this and she put this slide up for me i thought those people look like they're going to die this is a, this does not look like a lot of fun to me and uh so we had some conversation her husband jeff actually took this picture they're way up they had to take a trolley or a yeah a lift even to get up to where this place is and Jeff got this picture of his family on this crazy roller coaster. This is really way up high. And uh, as we, as Judy was sharing with me, there were some really deep roller coaster had. They really, this was a frightening experience and they really had to go deep when they were looking at this or when they were getting on this roller coaster to take this ride. But feeling deeper is an important part of finding ourselves and listening to our heart. So many people in this world live from moment to moment simply on the emotion of the moment without thinking, intellectually thinking about things that are going on in their lives. I think it's uh, almost um, an epidemic that people don't think deeper, feel deeper, look a little farther within themselves at the things that are going on around them I think it's kind of a bane on society, to be honest. We need to learn to feel and to think deeper. And of course, there are some mindful practices that help us with that. Living in the moment is one of those things. And that's something that not everyone can do, to live in the moment, to pay attention to what's happening right this very minute. Yesterday, I spent some time out of my shop, and you know, I love my shop. I, I, I have a lot of tools and I spend a lot of time building things. And I was building a windmill for Bonnie. And uh, it's something, it's a gift that I had bought her. And, uh, and I spent several hours building a windmill. And in the process of that, I think every single piece of wood that I picked up, every bolt and screw that I put into that windmill, I thought about it. You know, I was handling, I was thinking about it, I was enjoying myself, I wasn't in a hurry. I was living in the moment. And I loved it. I loved that feeling of being there, of being in the moment. Another thing that we need to do, you guys, that's really important as we listen to our heart, is to listen without judgment. And that can be a very difficult thing for us. I know we have to make a certain amount of judgment in this life just to stay alive and to be safe. But we can listen without judgment. Uh, we, there's a diversity in life. We need to be mindful of that. We need to be our own person. And I think this is hugely significant. Just be yourself um, and become more comfortable with silence. That's been important to me. The older I've gotten, the more important quiet and silence has meant to me. I guess at the end of the day, the one thing that Les Brown has tried to teach me anyway in this particular book is that my heart will take over from there. Your heart will take over from there. So just looking back with regard to this whole idea of listening to your heart, it's about contemplating and thinking 
and paying attention and listening and uh, I don't know what you're still on. I kind of don't think she is. She's at an airport. Uh, so at this juncture, anyway, guys, we'll open this up. Do you have any questions or thoughts you want to share? So, Bob, I have a question for you. Um, having not read Les's Brown, Les Brown's book, so are, are, are we, is this a summary of the book that you gave today, or are we going to be going through some, like you did with the 21 Laws of Irrefutable Leadership, uh, some segmented sections from the book? Yeah, exactly. So the very first law is listen to your heart, and that's what we were talking about today. And it's Got kind it. of... It's a kind of a touchy feely thing, and we, and Judy and I, had that conversation. You know, it's like not a specific, you know, law of success. It's more of an inner thing. But we go with the leveraging your gifts and your talents, and letting go of your fears, and you know, finding team members, that kind of a thing. Lift your mind up with self development, um, leaving negativity and toxins behind. This different kinds of things like that as we go forward. Okay, so so there'll be. So they're like we've gone through the first chapter of his book. Exactly. The right. first law is listen to your heart. So I, I I have a question for you because again I haven't read his book. But you when you had the page where you had the different Fs, you know, faith, family, um finances, uh, to fun and I don't remember some of the other ones. What what stood out for me, and again I don't know if this is part of his book but there's only 24 hours in a day. So I've got to make some decisions on how I'm going to spend my time in terms of what I really want, you know, from a faith standpoint, family standpoint, fitness, finance, and fun. Uh, again, there's only 24 hours a day, subtract my time for sleeping and eating. And that's what I've got left. And, and so does he have any, in his book, any suggestions in terms of how you budget time? towards doing what you really want no he doesn't and i think again those are just sort of individual things as you stop and ponder and think about your life how do you work all of that kind of thing in and um but he doesn't have anything in there at least in this very first chapter about um time development or time management if you will okay thanks yeah but it's a really good question because you're right you know the time is limited um yeah it just is it just is you know one of the things that, uh, again, that i really enjoy judy's 21 day challenge is that um when you start to write down the, like these are categories for example maybe uh, fitness was one of the categories but it wasn't just fitness it was a specific thing under fitness like i'm going to uh i'm going to walk 10,000 steps every day well, that was a very, very specific goal that I would be doing during the course of that day. And, and that was helpful to me to be able to do that under faith. You know, I'm going to read the new, I'm going to read one chapter in the New Testament today, or I'm going to, I'm going to learn about Saul who became Paul today. Um, you know, it would be very specific to the day. Uh, same with the family thing. And, you know, again, these don't have to be great big giant things, you know. The family thing might be we're going to have dinner together and I'm going to offer a word of prayer at dinner. You know, there's a family thing that tied us all together that day. I, I read my New Testament. I, you know, I had prayer with my family. I walked 10,000 steps today. Maybe my financial goal that day was that I was going to contact two people, find two new customers, try to find two new customers for the day. Maybe for fun, we were going to jump on the trampoline for an hour with the kids or whatever, you know, but very specific. What do you really want? And uh, we categorize those things. These are just for examples. Faith, family, fitness, finance, fun. They're just examples that Judy and I put together. These weren't necessarily Les Brown's example. So, so Bob, I, ha I have, a, as you were talking, as I was looking at the slide and listening to you talk, I don't know where other people are with regards to their belief in Christ and that, but uh, the, the observation that I'm thinking is that when we get to heaven, well, we don't have to worry about faith. We won't have to worry about family. We certainly won't have to worry about fitness because we'll have bodies that will never wear out or ever be sick. 
and we won't have to worry about finances. So the only thing that we'll be doing is having fun and we'll be having fun for all eternity. Yeah, I love it. I love that. You, you just made Bonnie laugh too. Thank you, Dan. That's You're welcome. A lovely thought. A lovely thought. Any other uh, questions or thoughts you guys while we've got you on the, on the webinar? Hello, good morning again, Dan it's, 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 and, and Bob, it's Donald. Hi. Um, as, I want to thank you for highlighting um, this book, using this book. I haven't read it myself yet, but um, that's wrong. He um, has been um, one of my mentors, so to speak. Uh, I've listened, and I still do, in fact, listen to a lot of his stuff. And um, this book, um, has been um, has made me very reflective of my my life and and uh, stuff like that, and um, I'm naturally going to um, be sure to get this book um, because it what it what it has done is put me back based on what you've uh, shared this morning put me back in um, time in my uh, my life. Uh, my family um, having made some decisions uh, to leave uh, Barbados um, 40 years ago. Um, I, I hear people now, the young people talking about uh, ride and die and making decisions. And um, I, I've got a couple of thoughts that I um, go to journal so that I'll have, be able to pass that on in a real way to my um children and grandchildren. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, you bet. You know, it's interesting, Donald, we, when we talk about journaling, for example, or writing things down, being specific in the things that we share, Bonnie and I went, uh, we redid our wills a few years ago, a couple years ago, I guess. And uh, of course, a standard will is just, you know, it's standard and, and we filled that out. But then I typed up a, about a, I can't remember, like a six page addendum to my will. And uh, in that addendum that I had, you know, we had it notarized and we sent copies to our five children. I outlined specifically some things that I wanted my five kids to do. And each of them individually, I gave them individual responsibilities upon our deaths to take care of certain things. We have, we have some assets and a farm and, and, and things that go along with the farm and, you know, equipment and, and vehicles and things of that nature. And so I broke that down and I sent that to my kids and they all read what their responsibility was specifically. And uh, it had meant a great deal to them. All of my kids, all five of them wrote back or called back and said, dad, thank you for that. And yes, I'll take care of that. You can count on me. And it was, it was a wonderful thing. And, um, being specific in our journaling and, and writing down those kinds of things for our posterity are very valuable. And Thanks, hi guys, I, it's, it's Judy, I'm back. The uh, TSA confiscated my phone, so I couldn't answer you. Um, so I just, thanks for filling in, Bob. I, I appreciate you uh, taking control. Oh yeah, absolutely, Judy. How are you doing? You made it through uh, TSA, did you? Yeah, I, I always have problems because I, I have my, uh, my, my Mac Pulse which is, you know, the cardiovascular medical device, and it always gets tagged. Um, and unfortunately, it was in the same bag as my phone. So I can answer you. I could hear you guys, but I couldn't answer you because I was on mute. That's all right. It's not a problem. Thanks, Judy. Um, any, other, any other thoughts you got before we close for the day? I, I'm glad that Judy, um, or we stayed on so that Judy could um, be back to join us um, at the end. Yeah, me too. Me too. Thank we you. love you, Judy. You're the best. Good luck in your travels, Denver and in Dallas. Thank you. It's, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm spreading the world word about Per Nine Plus. So um, hopefully, hopefully there will be a lot of great years and, and wonderful hearts. Yeah, perfect. Okay, guys. Thank you all so much, and Dan, thanks for doing the recording. Appreciate your thoughts, and we'll talk to you all again before you know it. Bye-bye.